Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about reactive programming. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posed on my comment section and basically it was the person who asked this question wanted me to elaborate a little bit on what reactive programming is and specifically what RxJS is and things, well, basically that library and what the benefit of all this is, right? Because he was a little bit unsure about reactive programming and RxJS in general, because he had the sensation that, all right, he's learning this, but he wants to understand if this is relevant, like, because he doesn't want to invest a bunch of time into learning something that may not be all that important for job purposes. And I think this is an excellent, I mean, I don't know this guy, but I was a little bit proud. I was, I really was, because it was, uh, it's so common that a junior developer, because I, I'm just assuming that he's a junior now, but uh, it's very common that you jump on the hype train and you're really enthusiastic about programming and you should be because it's awesome and it's super fun in pretty much every way that I can imagine. And when you are in that, that state where you're kind of in the honeymoon period, it's so easy for you to just jump on any tool that somebody recommends, especially if it's someone that recommends something that is a little bit cooler or a little bit out there. And reactive programming is definitely something that is cool. Now, what's interesting for me about reactive programming is that I am a little bit undecided on this one. I actually told him this as well. So in my, my world, my mind hasn't really settled yet on reactive programming just as a concept because I know roughly what the use case is today and I will tell you but I also want to like uh, it's I'm on the dagger's edge here it can go either way in, in from one perspective I think it's absolutely genius and from another perspective I think it's absolute madness and will all will end in absolute re, like in really shitty code you see the basics of reactive programming is that you embrace what we call events and well it's, it's not necessarily event driven programming but it's the closest thing that I can that's the closest thing that I can describe. Now the basic idea here is that you observe an entity of some sort. Now most of you who have looked into reactive program may have started to see a pattern in the tutorial examples that you actually see when you look into this concept. One of the most common ones that you will see uh, is basically Excel. Like it's a, I don't know how many tech talks or tutorials I've watched when it comes to reactive programming. It doesn't have to be RxJS, it can be BaconJS or there are a few others as well. Like there's tons of these, right? And most of the time the example is an Excel sheet and you may have noted, may have wondered why. Well, because building an Excel sheet is actually quite complicated, but with reactive programming, it becomes fairly straightforward to implement some of the core features. Now, one of the core features here is that you want to express that you have a, sequ a, a series of cells that are combined somehow into the value that uh, the sum of one cell is basically the it's a computation based on other cells. An example one, an example is a sum. As a, you know, it's, it's so classical. You have three columns or three rows or something like that. You wanna combine these numbers into one, in one cell and just to have the sum there, right? Now, reactive programming makes this fairly easy because the whole premise of the idea is that you use something we call, that we call observables. You can basically declare that, all right, Given that anything happens with a value in this thing that I'm observing, if the value of this thing changes, dispatch an event and tell me that this thing changed or that there was an incoming network request or something like that. An event has taken place. So that's kind of the power here. It's almost like a pub sub type of system. You dispatch an event that expresses that, oh, something changed here, something changed here, something changed here. And what's cool about that is that now you can actually have different streams that different consumers can actually listen to. And you can combine these streams, you can mutate streams, and you can do all kinds of things. It's actually, in a way, it's a fairly functional approach to, to thinking where it's just a stream of transformations that actually take place, which is, I think, is pretty cool. So in this scenario with the Excel sheet, all you really have to do to solve this problem is to declare an 
declare a event listener on the cells that are to be combined into the sum or into to be combined into the sum, right? You create these streams, and then the the cell that actually is going to represent the sum of these these different and these other cells. All it has to do is to listen to these events, and when the events actually start pouring in, it can actually just combine these values into that uh, that sum, right? This is the basic use case of reactive programming, and I think it's pretty cool. Now, the the thing is, though, even though I think this is a is that at a conceptual level a pretty cool thing, I will tell you that it's all but pointless to learn. And that is basically because most of the industry, uh, they haven't found, or rather what I can see, like we haven't adopted it. There's no mass adoption of ArcGIS or like just reactive programming in general. It's almost to the, I mean, you can think of it as, similar, as, as a similar thing to functional programming, where there are some specific people out there who are true zealots and like really, really push functional programming. You can think of reactive programming as being a very similar thing, but less successful than what functional programming is. So now there are plenty of people who will tell me as well that, oh, well, Fred, we use reactive programming and event-driven stuff all the time. You know, we, it's, uh, it's everywhere. You know, it's, you may have not thought about that, but every time you create a web server, well, technically a request handler or a routing system, well, that is event-driven. Event every time someone does something like that. So that's event driven. And there are quite a few other scenarios where you have instances of observables and you have instances of events taking place and you need to react to those, um, to those events, right? And although this is true, but it's slightly different because having elements of reactive programming in your code is not the same thing as like using RxJS and learning everything about it and having an entire architecture that revolves around it, right? Which is, well, that's in my world a fairly big difference. So the, it's sad to say, but it's not really useful to you for job purposes to focus a lot on reactive programming as it stands today. I mean, I think it's interesting because it's a curiosity and it has, as I said, I'm still undecided if this is genius or if it's stupid. Um, there's not that many use cases for it where you want to actually structure large parts of your code base around a concept and that's the sort of, oh, that's the sort of investment level you kind of need to adopt something because it's it's a very similar thing to functional programming where some people will claim that you're oh, right yeah functional functional programming has a relevancy yes it has a relevancy but it's very rare that people invest so much into functional programming that the entire code base is a pure functional programming type of deal right usually the way it goes is that the bulk of the code is written in some other fashion usually in object oriented programming and in some cases you use functional programming RxJS and reactive programming can be thought of a, as a very similar thing to this. It's very rare that the whole thing is a reactive, like a reactive architecture. It's rather that you might have some specific use case here and there, and that doesn't really translate into all that much work relevancy. So what I want you to take away from this is that as for RxJS and reactive programming, I think it has an in, it's a very interesting approach to solving a very specific problem, but it's very rare that the industry has this problem and that the, the, value, the value of reactive program hasn't really grown into the industry, so it's not really adopted to the point where you should focus on it. I think that you should skip it just in general and focus on things that are more relevant. So in JavaScript land, that's going to be the SBA frameworks and things like that. That's going to be a better investment for you than reactive programming. But if you find it fascinating, like I do, have a look at it because there are some really cool ideas. It's just that it's not adopted to the point where it's core knowledge. That's at least what I can see. Have a great day.